Hey guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hector Scuba and Marina. Got a video discussion today, and it's going to be on equipment for public safety divers. And what made us shoot this video was there's an article on Scuba Board that was just recently posted. A gentleman had joined his, his local volunteer public safety dive team, and he was looking to make a purchase for a BCD and wanted to know what a, a good BCD to, to be a public safety diver would be. And there was a lot of good information out there. Uh, we even went and put you know, our two cents worth. We gave him a list of BCDs to look into. Some we sold, some we don't. Um, but it started making me think, there's just not that much information out there as far as what a public safety diver should or should not wear. Sure, you can go get the training and your instructor is going to be biased, myself included. I'm very biased on what I think you should wear. Um, but there's two things to think about, or actually there's three things. First of all, location. Location, location, location means a lot. If you're in upstate New York or up in Maine and you're doing ice diving, you're not going to be in a three mil jumpsuit or even a shorty for that. You're going to be in a dry suit. Well, it's no different with public safety diving. You're going to have to wear the equipment that is suitable for the environment that you're going in. So location means a lot. If you're a public safety diver in South Florida and you're recovering a body 20 feet off a, a, a reef, a coral reef somewhere, you could be fine in one of these suits. However, if you're recovering a, a vehicle out of a lake or a pond and you've got gas and oil, you wouldn't want that gas and oil on the, on the neoprene of your wetsuit. So, of course, you'd want to either say a tri-laminate or a, a vulcanized rubber uh, type dry suit, some type of shell-based dry suit. So location means a lot. What you do as far as your job as the public safety also means a lot. Number two, are you paid or are you volunteer? If you are a paid team member, most likely the funding's there. They're going to buy what equipment and tell you what you're going to wear. Okay. If you're a volunteer, most likely the funding's coming out of your own pocket and you're pretty much open to purchase whatever you can, you know, whatever you can afford. Uh, but number three to think about, of course, is policies and procedures. What policies and procedures does that team have in place that dictates what you wear, what you can or cannot wear as far as BCD purchases, regulators, stuff like that. So what this video, what we're going to do is we're going to show you the equipment or I'm going to show you the equipment that I use, um, explain why I use it, why it works for me, and then I'm going to put all the equipment together, put it on just so you can see what it looks like, and then I'll give you some final thoughts at the end of the video on no matter what equipment you decide to wear, we're going to talk about what's a little bit more important than just the equipment. So let's take a, a quick look at what I wear and we'll discuss each item individually. All right, guys, let's take a quick look at what gear I use. I'll briefly discuss what each item is, why I use it, um, and then we'll, at the end we'll put everything together. I'll put it on and then I'll give you some final thoughts on uh, your, your decision to purchase gear for public safety diving. So I've got my box here. A couple little items that I throw in here. Uh, first of all is a throw bag. I have multiple purposes for this. Of course, it is a standard rescue throw bag. I can also use it as a line tender. Uh, I can use it for me. If it's quick deploy real quick, I can snap it onto me. My line tender can take it with him, and he can let it out as I'm diving. I always carry some type of lifting device. I choose a 50-pound lift bag. Works great for me. It can be used as a backup lifting device. Uh, system for myself uh, if I need to. I have two BCD uh, that I or two BCDs that I typically use. Uh, the first one is my lifeguard systems or team lifeguard. It is their public safety model. Um, I'm going to show you the setup fully geared up. I'll show you the setup where and it, but I'm also going to show you my other BCD just quickly and talk about when and why I would use it. But with the lifeguard systems, I like the way it's set up. I have two cutting utensils here, or cutting tools. I have a set of shears on one side. I have a spare uh, backup knife on the other side. The pockets here, I can put my SMBs, real stuff like that in. And even with thick gloves, when I open a pocket, I don't really have to reach down to search for it. I can completely open the pocket all the way to get to whatever tool or item I need. Got another large pocket here on the side. Moving over to the back, they got reflective tape sewed into the material, so for nighttime operations, it works good. Um, this unit it, or this BCD is non weight integrated, it does have a trim pouch here, and we're going to talk about that trim pouch here in a minute. It's just got a standard cam strap here, but it does have a heavy duty uh, stainless steel cam buckle, which I really like. Here on the right side, and the reason that you need this trim pouch, they do have a 
uh, pony pouch built in for a pony bottle. I believe theirs will fit a 13 up to a 30 cubic foot. I choose a 30 cubic foot pony bottle uh, as redundancy air for public safety diving. But once I have everything together, you'll kind of see how that fits together. But that's my primary choice, especially if I'm in rescue mode. It's something that I need quick deployment on. It's easy for me to throw that jacket style in. Now with the jacket style, I'd still have to wear a weight belt or some type of weight harness with it. My other option uh, that I do wear from time to time, of course, is my backplate wing. And with my backplate wing, of course, I go with the OMS Red Wing. Um, it is a single bladder system. I do dive a dry suit, so that's kind of my backup bladder. But with it, I do have also another cutting tool on it. If I'm going to be in an environment where it's, say, a strictly recovery or if it's a cold environment where I've got a lot of thick undergarments on under my dry suit and I need to wear a lot of different weight or a lot of different um, denomination of weight, if you will, I can split it up because on this model, I have put weight integrated pouches that are quick release and I do have trim pouches back here on the back to help break up the weight itself. So this is my other option for a BCD that I go with. Um, as far as quick deployment and rescue mode, I always go with the lifeguard system. If it's simply recovery mode or I need a lot of extra weight, my back plate and wing works great. I do use a steel back plate, so that's kind of my option there. There's another reason that I would use this over the uh, other BCD, which we will get to briefly when we talk about tanks and, and pony systems, but I'll, I'll come back and talk about this here briefly. Regulators of choice. Of course, we are in a, a changing season constantly, if you will, here in North Carolina. So I do go with a cold water reg because we do dive a lot of cold water. Uh, I do a lot of training up north, and when I go up there and do ice diving, i got to have a cold water reg. I'm not going to get into the argument, should you be in den versus yoke. I use a yoke. Uh, being that I own a dive shop, I can pretty much purchase any gear on the market that I want. This is just what works for me. Once again, this video is not about what you should or shouldn't buy. It's just simply what I wear, what I use. Um, so it's what works for me. Off the right side of the first stage, I have a quick release hose. I do use a full face mask and that quick release hose is for that. Uh, there are times that I do use a standard mask in which the uh, Navy ABS 22, which is what the rig system is, I do use the standard Navy ABS um, second stage for it. This does become an alternate or a backup when I'm in a full face mask. And when I'm not in a full face mask, this is my primary. I have just a standard MV Octo for my backup. On the left hand side, I do dive a dive computer. Now I am old school and I believe in using gauges and stuff like that. But we do a lot of evidence recovery for the sheriff's departments or the sheriff and police departments here in our area. So being able to document any information I can and print that off for court purposes, that's what works great for a computer because I can print it straight off. I also have two low pressure hoses. Of course, one's for a dry suit, one's for a um, PCD inflator. But that's my primary regulator of choice. My alternate reg, which goes with my pony system, is just an old standard brute. Um, I've had this regulator forever. It works good. It's a workhorse. I've pretty much done everything but nuke it, and I can't destroy it, so it's going to work for me. Uh, standard Octo or old Brute Octo here, and I do wear this, uh, since I wear my pony primarily on my back, I do wear this around my neck. I do have a standard 6-inch hose here. Uh, as far as redundancy goes, I'm not too concerned with how much air is in, in my redundancy bottle at all times? As long as it's got air in it to begin to dive, I know it's going to have air in it. So I just threw a little six inch hose on here. I've used this for several years. It tends to work fine for me. I do wear a tending harness whether or not I am being tendered. And I once again, I go with lifeguard systems. You'll notice I do have an extra set of shears here. Worst case scenario, I'm entangled. I have to remove my gear. I still have a cutting utensil on me that I can do that with. Um, the tending harness here, I can strap off to a line tender if I need to, so it works great. You will see all this once I put it on, just how easy it is and how it works for me. Like I said, I do use a full face mask, and being that I own a shop and I can purchase any gear out there, um, I use what I've used for many years. I'm not going to get caught up in what manufactures better than the other. I simply use what I've used for years, what works for me. Uh, and, and what most of the guys in our area use. Because like I said, I do believe in standardized equipment as far as the dive team is concerned. 
Um, but I, I believe that there's many manufacturers out there that make good gear. I went with just a basic Ocean Reef Neptune Space G diver. It is the baseline model that uh, Ocean Reef makes. They do make one that's a little bit more heavier duty. It's called the Iron Mask. It's got, instead of aluminum buckles, it's got steel buckles. Instead of silicone and rubber straps, it's got pure rubber straps. Uh, but this is what I use. It's what a lot of the guys in our area use. We all have comm units that we can talk back and forth on. Some of the accessories that I've put on here, of course, are these lights that go to my uh, spider straps, and they're just standard little waterproof flashlights. Uh, I believe Aquatech makes these. Uh, they're, they're decent lights. They're cheap. They're LED, and it keeps everything hands-free. So no matter where I'm looking, I have lights in that area. You will notice I have this funky little mount up here. This is an, an Toba camera mount by uh, Antova. And since we do a lot of evidence recovery for court document and purposes like that, I always have a camera mounted to my full face mask for documentation purposes. Uh, now, I briefly discussed about going to a standard uh, mask. When I do that, my alternate becomes my primary, and then this goes in the place of the hose for my full face mask, and it's just a standard MV Octo by Mario's. It's what works for me. I've been using it for years, never had any issues out of it. Um, I've used other manufacturers. OTS makes a great full face mask for public safety diving. I'm not going to get into which one's better than the other because that's really personal opinion and it's personal preference to you. This is just what works for me. Now, depending on whether I'm not, I'm in my back clip wing or my uh, jacket style BC, whatever works, I do wear a weight belt with my jacket style. All right, fins of choice. I, I'm a Mares dealer, so of course I stick with Mares. But this is their Power Planas. It's a solid rubber fin. Uh, the Power Plana style has been around for years. This, this new style has only come out in the last few years. But what I like about it, it's good heavy fin. So if I'm in a dry suit, I don't have to worry about getting inverted. It's got a large foot pocket, so I can wear pretty much any dry suit boot with it. Um, with it being short, I can't. it's easier for me to move in it if I need to, if I need to walk around or whatnot. Um, it's a good thick, heavy, and wide fin. So I really like that, and that's kind of my choice there. Uh, so I went with the Mars power plane. I do carry a spare backup mask if I'm in a full face mask or even if I'm not. This other spare mask, if I'm in a traditional mask, this goes in my right thigh pocket on my dry suit so it works good as a redundancy or backup item. And of course I usually carry two or three SMBs with me and usually at least one or two reels. Now what I do with these is not uh, standard for your typical recreational diver who's going to signal at the surface or anything like that. If we're marking several things of evidence, if we're on a crime scene, I can pop each buoy up at each area, come up, discuss with the law enforcement officer in charge what I've got. He can review the footage, and then he can kind of guide me as far as bagging that evidence, bringing it up, stuff like that. Plus, it can give him, if I've got multiple areas where evidence is located, I can shoot multiple buoys up, and that can kind of give him a mental picture of what I'm looking at underwater for his crime scene documentation. So I usually carry multiple uh, just finger spools and SMBs. Now I will tell you, certain SMBs you can't use with a full face mask. So most of mine I've usually take the caps off so I can use excess or expired gas uh, from my reg itself to inflate. That's some of the, the equipment that I, I have here. Um, we're going to move on to cylinder selection real quick and then I'll put everything together and show you what it looks like. Going to a pony first and foremost, I choose to use 30 cubic foot cylinders and I have two that are identical except for the hardware that's on them. Uh, the main one that I use is of course with the uh, Lifeguard Systems BCD. It's just a standard 30 cubic foot aluminum pony and it just slides down in that pony pocket. The other one is identical as far as uh, tank choice itself. However, I do have two different complete setups on here. One is a back mount, and for public safety diving, once again, I do prefer back mount, but this just clips onto a quick release system that's on the cam strap of the back plate wing. And then I do have a pony system or a sling system set up that if it's, say, I've already made my dive, I'm on the surface, I'm doing a surface interval, and as a backup diver, if I need to take a pony down real quick, it's quick release to hand off to another diver, I can simply click off or click off to my D-rings if I'm in a back plate wing or even in the jacket style I can just simply clip off it's or clip on to me once I get there I can unclip it hand it off to a diver of choice so depending on which system I'm using the 30 cubic foot pony is what I choose to use as far as a primary cylinder 
Um, just for simplicity's sake, I do go with aluminum 80. Now, there have been times that I have went with heavier steels, but for what our, the teams that I dive on, the policies and procedures, as far as how long we're in the water, you know, we're usually there less than 20 minutes, so an aluminum 80 works fine for me. Uh, I do actually prefer either a white or a bright yellow cylinder, but um, the one I have here, being that I'm at the shop, is just a blue aluminum 80. But aluminum 80 is what I choose to go with. If, I, if I'm up north, I'm doing some ice diving, something like that, or I'm teaching ice rescue or whatnot, I might go with the steel just to eliminate some of the extra weight that I have to wear. But the aluminum 80, bar none, is my first go-to choice. So next one I'm going to do is put all this gear together. Give me just a second. I'm going to put it on. Um, you will see my dry suit of choice. I'm going to briefly discuss it with you. Um, as far as tri-laminate neoprene or vulcanized rubber, I prefer tri-laminate over all of them. Of course, vulcanized rubber is going to give me the best protection. I'm going to lose a lot of mobility and I'm going to lose a lot of warmth. Now, neoprene, being that I'm going to stay really warm with a neoprene suit, whether it's a wet suit or dry suit, I do run the risk in a hazmatic environment to say gas and oil from a car or boat is going to eat right to that neoprene. So I go with tri-laminate. It's kind of the best of both worlds. It's what works for me. Um, you guys have seen my dry suit in the past. I just use an OS system. It's a TELUS model dry suit. Mine's a black and orange. I, I had them custom make it black and orange for me simply to represent the rescue part of what we do. So, but let me put all this gear together, put it on, and we'll, I'll kind of do a 360 view, show you what it looks like, and then I'll give you some final thoughts as far as gear purchase for public safety diving. Okay guys, so I got all my gear put together. I'm wearing it right now, and I, I just want to give you a brief rundown of exactly what I got on, the location I've got everything, and once again, why I choose to wear this. I'm not telling you this is what you got to have. Location's going to dictate your gear. Policies and procedures are going to dictate your gear. Your budget versus a paid team's budget is going to dictate gear. I just want to show you the, the equipment that I use and why I use it. And hopefully it will help you make a decision in the future if you decide to get into public safety diving. So starting head to toe, of course, typically I would be wearing a hood. I'm in a 75 degree building right now and I'm about to sweat to death so I don't have my hood on. But I do go with the full face mask. I have a camera for documentation purposes. I do have a comm unit. And of course, I do have these lights on top so that I have hands-free operation and I can see whether I'm in a limited viz environment or not. Working my way down, my primary backup or my alternate system goes to my pony. And it's just a standard brute style rig. By Sherwood, goes to my pony system that is on my back. Now, I do have another alternate here that goes to my first stage. This is just there because it's there and it does give me an extra if I need to pop off my mask maybe I'm not out of air but if I need to pop off my mask I do have an option to go to either one they're both quick release so I can hand them off if I need to to another diver starting on the left hand side first thing you will notice on my line tender and harness itself I have a set of EMT shears I'll show you a couple other cutting tools as we get to them working on down I have another set of EMT shears, and then my first large pocket is where I keep my 50-pound lift bag. And as you can tell, even with the bag in, even with air in the BCD, it's not that big of a bulk system around me. I don't look like a Christmas tree with all these things clipped off to me. I try to keep everything secure in pockets and clipped at the same time, but they need to be ready accessible and easy to get to with thicker gloves. On the right-hand side, i got another cutting tool here. It's just a spare backup dive knife. Working my way on down, i got another pocket here where I store another SMB and reel system. One thing I do like about this BCD, and even with my back plate and wing, because I have them customized, is nothing is getting in the way of the inflator of my dry suit itself. Or, uh, so my chest straps are a lot lower with this BCD. The chest strap is actually just above my navel, so I don't have anything up here getting in the way and possibly hitting the inflator causing a rapid ascent. My harness of choice for line tending, same thing. My ring's not getting in the way of anything. It's completely out of the way of the BCD and completely out of the way of my inflator. So that's why I choose the lifeguard systems there. Working my way down to my left thigh pocket is where I keep my spare uh, SMB and reel. Like I said, I carry two or three of these and two or three reels with me. That way if I'm marking multiple uh, pieces of evidence in the crime scene or whatnot, I can mark them and that way we can kind of get a picture of what the crime scene looks like at the surface what we're looking at underneath. So that's where I keep a spare reel and buoy. 
My right thigh pocket on my dry suit is where I keep my spare mask. In the event I need to ditch my full face mask and go to here, I can. Once again, standard aluminum tank with a standard 30, 30, 30 cubic foot aluminum tank for the backup. Kind of see how it is. And then, of course, I have the trim pouch over here to help balance it out with that um, tank on the back. And, of course, a standard weight belt. If I'm in a backplate and wing, of course, I have the weight integrated systems built into it. This is my basic setup. Last thing, of course, is my dry gloves. And, of course, I just use the glove lock system. They're real quick, easy to snap on. The reason I like dry gloves is three reasons. One, it keeps my fingerprints off evidence. Two, it's great for hazmatic environment. And three, if I'm going to be dry everywhere else, I want my hands to be dry as well. So that's why I went with these options. I'm going to snap my mask on, snap my gloves on, kind of give you a final picture of what everything looks like, and then I'll give you some final thoughts. All right, guys, as you can tell, public safety divers, we have to wear a lot of different types of equipment. Um, there's no uh, one right or wrong, though some equipment are, is better, if you will, than in other types. But like I said, location makes a big difference. You're not going to be wearing, uh, you know, your shorties or your three mil jumpsuits way up north ice diving. You're not going to be wearing your real thick undergarments in your dry suit if you're 25 foot on a coral reef maybe retrieving a boat or something like that so location dictates what type of equipment you wear policies and procedures of whatever team you're diving on dictate what you're going to wear um, of course your budget whether it's coming out of your pocket or your department's budget anything like that is going to definitely dictate what you wear just because i showed you what i wear i'm not telling you you should just run out and buy it in the description below, I'm going to give you a list of BCDs to look in. It's going to be the same list I gave the gentleman on the scuba board. Uh, some I sell, some I do not. It's just stuff I've used over the years that I really believe in. Um, the two that I showed you, the OMS backplate and wing and the lifeguard systems BCD that you just saw me in, those are two that I currently believe in that, that are, they work for me. Um, no matter which one I'm wearing, I usually have things clipped off all in the same position. All the uh, cutting tools that I use, I have shears here, shears here, and a knife here. If I'm in, in that BCD, the lifeguard systems. If I'm in the back plate and wing, I have shears here on my harness, uh, or my tending harness, shears here on my back plate and wing harness, and a knife on this back plate, back plate and wing harness as far as my shoulder strap harness goes. So I have things pretty consistent no matter what type of gear that I'm wearing. I hope this kind of opens your eyes to if you're getting into this field or if you're already in the public safety field and you're looking to change equipment, it's not so much you're going to buy gear what you feel comfortable in because let's talk about that briefly. If I'm teaching a class, a basic open water class, and my student's just not comfortable in his mask, I may take my mask off, hand it to him and say, here, try this one. He may be perfectly okay wearing my mask. If I don't have a spare, I'm going to take that student's mask, put it on, and continue teaching him. As an instructor, I need to be comfortable no matter what gear I'm wearing. The same applies to public safety. No matter what you're wearing, you need to be able to feel comfortable. If you're in a back plate and wing, feel comfortable. If you're in a jacket, feel comfortable. If you're in a full face mask, feel comfortable. If you're in a standard mask, feel comfortable. If you're not, you don't need to be in this field. Because like I said, if you're on a paid team and you're getting dictated to, to what gear you should wear, you're not going to have a choice. Think of police officers, for instance. When I was a police officer, I had a uniform, and that uniform was consistent with every other road patrol officer that was within that department. You know, I, I had the choice of where I could put stuff on my belt, but I didn't really have a choice on what firearm I could carry, what handcuffs I could carry. That was dictated by that department. Well, the same thing with public safety teams. Most of the time, they're going to dictate 
if you, especially if they're paid, what you can or cannot wear. So you need to be comfortable. Be comfortable with yourself. Be comfortable with the equipment. Be comfortable with your skills and your ability. If you're not, you need to get out of this field, get you some more training and, and experience under your belt, and then come back into it. So when you're looking to buy gear, don't necessarily base it off what gear you feel comfortable, but it needs to be what gear you feel comfortable so that you can do the operation because there's some gear that is suited for public safety diving, there's some not. Once again, check the description down below for the link for the scuba board article plus my top choices for BCD picks that kind of help you make a choice for you. I really appreciate you watching this video. If you have a question, comment, concern, or complaint, please put it down in the comments below. Send me a, a private message or an email. You can contact me several different ways. If you've got any suggestions for me, let me know what works for you. I've been in this field for a very, very long time. I've been in the scuba industry a very long time, and I'm always open to learn new stuff. So if you've got some comments, suggestions, or complaints, or concerns, let me know about it. Guys, once again, I appreciate you watching this video. Make sure you like us and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest. Please subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys... We appreciate your business.